Welcome back to another amazing episode of the Muscle Intelligence Podcast. I am your host, Ben Pokolsky, as always, framing this podcast around the six pillars of a lean, healthy, and muscular body. I hope you're having an amazing day. I hope you've been able to get outside and smile today, bring love into your heart, and ultimately get in the gym and build some awesome physiques soon. It's coming, ladies and gents. Hopefully, the world is starting to open up and let the sun shine in. Let us get outside. Let us get back in the gym and build some muscles. If you're not, if you're already training at home, it's okay. I hope you're making the most of it. I hope you're making the most of every single rep. I hope you make the most of every single breath. Life is short. Nothing is guaranteed. And I think within every breath, within every step, within every eye movement, within every door we open, there's an opportunity to become present, to become aware of what we're doing, how we're doing it, and ultimately create the habit of awareness in our life. And if you can become aware of the things that you do unconsciously, you bring them to the service and it allows you to change. So hopefully we all become aware of that with and use our exercise as the vehicle for change, right? If you're already changing anyway, training anyways, why not take that exercise you're already doing and use it as your greatest daily opportunity to become more present, to become more mindful, to ultimately become more conscious so that you can start challenging your beliefs, creating a new identity and living your greatest life. Today's guest, Erwan LaCour, is an absolutely mind-blowing gentleman. Now, although his history and his background is around natural movement, I will disclose, we didn't talk about natural movement whatsoever. Erwan and I went deep on the esoteric conversation of how to ultimately change your life. We talk about visualization principles. We talk about connecting with your body. You guys are going to love this conversation. He talks basically the entire time and just gets into his zone of genius where you can tell he's speaking from his heart. Um, there's so much amazing value given in this conversation um, from building your body, building your mind, and ultimately living your true life purpose. So much value. I'm so grateful to have connected with Erwan. I know you guys are going to love this podcast. If you do love the podcast, don't forget to subscribe. You can also now watch these podcasts on YouTube. We've started recording videos since Corona began because I wanted to engage with the audience. We're also doing Q&As live. If you guys haven't become part of the Muscle Intelligence community, I suggest you head over there. It's a great way to interact with myself. You can interact with Ashley and all the amazing community we're building over at Muscle Intelligence uh, Facebook group. Um, you can expect people in there to be uplifting, to be supportive, and ultimately create this amazing community where we're lifting each other up. Because I know sometimes right now, especially where we're spending time uh, maybe confined with people that aren't on the same page as us, maybe they're not supporting our goals. We're here to support your goals. So if there's something you need help with, if you have a question you want answered, head over to Muscle Intelligence Facebook group, join there. I'd love to hear from you in there, as well as the iTunes uh, subscription box. Go over and click that. Anyways, guys, hope you have a great day. Enjoy this podcast with Erwan LaCour. We're live. How's everything? We're live. Whoa. We're live. <laughs> We're going to talk about natural movement. We've got the man from Mexico. Erwan, how you doing, buddy? Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for inviting me, Ben. And uh, I'm doing great. Uh, I just gave you a glimpse of uh, where I live um, and the view I have, which I'm so fortunate. So yeah, I could not be happier. Normally, I'm the one making everyone jealous by showing um, videos out my window, but today it's rainy here to, in Florida, so I get to be a little bit envious of where you are. <laughs> well, I am lucky, yeah. Wow. But, you know, my wife and I, we also made our life happen the way we want, so oh, in some okay. ways, you know, like, yeah, yeah we're in the place we want it to be, for sure. Good for you. That's so great, man. And I think everyone, um, there's, there's so much to be learned from that is like this idea of creating your life rather than just allowing life to happen to you. And you know, I'm in that I'm that phase of my life now where it's like, what does the next 10 years look like for me and how do I curate it in such a way that I end up being exactly where I want to be and with nothing left to chance? Yeah, it, so. absolutely. We, we um, that is the story of uh, my life once I, uh, left and even before I left my parents' house when I was, uh, you know, just 18, uh, was to build to design my life the way uh, I want it, which, which has been a, a whole process of many years. It doesn't happen overnight for sure. You need consistency and vision for yourself. 
Yeah, one thing I learned, and this is a great lesson for anybody listening, is that um, you have to be so. Sp- I mean, you could tell me what your opinion is on this, but I found I had to be so specific. Oh, 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 did, oh. did I lose your? I, I lose got. Your... Okay, you're back. Um, yeah. Put it on my tab. Okay, for everybody who's listening, I am in Mexico <laughs> in a little tiny fisherman village. I have actually a very high um, connectivity, but sometimes there are like a few glimpses. So yeah, I'll nice, do nice. Some technology. Yeah, I still got you. So we're good. Um, so what I was saying is, um, I think I'm so good at manifesting my life that I have to be very careful with what I choose. Because sometimes if you leave the little details out, sometimes things go kind of not the way you want. So when you're creating your life, you got to be very specific and uh, very detailed with what you want. And I find, I find that very much for myself is if I, if I forget to mention something or if I forget to pay attention to one small detail... You get to where you want it to be in life, and you realize, damn it, this is something that I missed out. Now I got to go back and fix that. That's, that's, um, I guess, you know, there are different uh, ways to approach this. Uh, and um, it looks like it works really well for you. And uh, just like in life, we have different skills, and it's sometimes we work in the same field, but we have a different method. Um, I guess my method is a little different. Uh, I, really visualize on the the principles and you know like the main idea mm-hmm. and then i go in the flow of it um and uh yeah that's the way i that's the so, way I work. Tell, what, what visualizing principles tell me what that means okay um you okay well we're, you're talking about manifestation right sure. so now we're talking about something that has nothing to do with our respective uh Movement. you know line of work and right. uh, what we do we're talking about the fundamental principles it's basically our our operating system mm-hmm. the way we operate this and this in the heart and the mind um to invite that which we want to experience in this life this is what it is about so uh, first off, you have to actually either believe or observe, it's up to you, that that idea that you can consciously alter the course of future event is real to some people. Let, let's let's talk about that. Let's address that because otherwise it's going to be the elephant in the room to begin with, um, which is that a lot of people would find it impossible, just rationally not possible to talk about manifestation um you have to understand or to accept the idea that it's not just about of course i choose the 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 job i want to do or the the company i want to start uh the place where i want to live the people i want to hang out i choose all of that and i think of all of that but at the same time when it happens it's only the result of my direct work cause and effect I pick up that phone, I make that appointment, um, I choose to study that thing, I start that project. Well, that is obviously, it can be called manifestation, but that's just the result of my work. So I'd like to ask you, Ben, when you talk about manifestation and how good you are at manifestation, are you talking about what I just mentioned or are you implying another side of it which would imply that by thought, you're altering the course of events with a direct action. Both, 100%. So obviously it takes conscious action and moving moving toward things you need to be doing, but there's always things that happen. And I think you'll agree, I hope you'll agree, maybe not, a lot of people don't, but sometimes you just, you think of something and you're like, hey, this would be really interesting. And almost immediately it appears and you're just like, God, that's just weird. And it's, it's not just Siri or Alexa listening to my conversations, right? It's like, you know, some obscure thing that happens in your life and you're like, I didn't expect this at all. I'm so grateful that this just happened. And uh, I do absolutely believe that's possible. Absolutely. And uh, personally, my life changed dramatically in the direction where I truly wanted to go when I acknowledged that that principle work works and then I made it work for me. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's the idea that you are going to invite the exact experience. You're going to have ultimately the exact experience that you invite 
consciously or that you are constantly entertaining consciously or not and often unconsciously in your mind so it's in that sense our mental energy is vibrational and it is going to um to connect with a certain field that are going to manufacture circumstances that are going to bring you towards the cir those circumstances where you're going to be experiencing what you had in mind. Now, what you had in mind in term of um, um, in term of the specificity of it, where is it? What is it? In what country? In what place? With what people? What is happening? All of these little details. This is endless, right? It can be anything you want mm -hmm. because there is so much variety in this world. That's the context. The context is always unique. But what is it that you are going to truly experience that is that has to do with uh, universal principles? Okay, a car, a trip, a trip, a certain amount of money, all of these things, they are not the experience exactly, um, a relationship. They're not. What is the experience is how you feel inside as you experience the experience. Right. And so you have to focus on what is it that you want to feel in that experience that you invite. So brilliant. And that's something that we talk about all the time that you have the ability to choose and to curate the way you feel, right? It's not lever it's not ever letting the world choose your emotions for you. It's I get to choose my response. I get to choose my perception of these events. And therefore, I can determine if these things are suiting my beliefs and my manifestation reality or not. Exactly. So you have to um, be in control of the experience that you pursue, which implies that you must become great and always better. And that's a reminder to self right there. Uh, as of the experience that you are, are entertaining in the present moment. Every time, every, every time you step out of that which you want to ultimately or experience in the future, that you're not experiencing now. And that there is a complete correlation between the feeling you're having in the now and what you are inviting. It's, it's there's no difference. You can't be like, oh yeah, I don't feel so great now because you know I need to manifest this. But once I manifest this, I'm gonna feel that way. No, that is not the way it works. That is not the way it works. Uh, so you can only manifest to the equivalent of the way that you feel right now. Exactly. Yeah. So this is this is a perfect segue into what you are so brilliantly teaching around the world. And I think, I think it starts with uh, allowing our audience to start to understand what it means to connect with your body. So the society we live in is so disconnected from the way that they feel that they don't know positions. They don't know how to access certain movements that most people are so emotionally stuck in their mind. Their body also becomes a reflection of that that mind that nervous system so i'd love to have you speak to maybe some of your entry points for having people say hey we're going to move down this path of teaching your body how to move mm. call it naturally call it well uh, but first i need you to actually um, be able to to pay attention to this vessel so many entry points i could use um let's let's uh let's approach it this way so another person another say fitness professional would be like you want to lose weight i'm gonna make you lose weight you want to get bigger muscles i'm gonna get you know i'm gonna help you get get big 
um, you want, you know, general fitness, general well-being, you know, energy. Um, you know, we're going to do, you know, some cardio and stuff and a bit of strength and a bit of everything. You're going to feel great. All of these are, are great. They are, they are solutions. For every problem, there's a solution. Uh, the same way um, there is a pill for every physical ailment you could ever have. You have a headache, there's a special pill for that. You have a stomach ache, there's a special pill for that, right? So in your life, um, you have any specific issue or that at some point starts to feel like an issue for you, such as feeling disembodied, feeling heavy in your body, you know, not feeling a connection with your body. Like my wife, Jessica, would say, um, feeling alien to your own body. Um, there are solutions for that, specific solutions for that. My approach, I like to call it a school of real world physical capability. The primary point is to develop what I consider a true physical education foundation, which is to make your body capable to operate effectively in the real world. That means that you can pass obstacles, you can balance, it's all practical. It's not about do that movement. Okay, and then the indirect result will be you lose weight, you look better, you have more energy. Those are given. If you practice your body, you'll become stronger, you'll have all kinds of positive physiological adaptations that will happen in your body, regardless of what you train. If you do more strength, you'll have more strength. If you do you know, more weight, you'll have more strength. If you do more cardio, you'll have more cardio. If you do more flexibility, mobility, you'll have more flexibility, mobility, right? It's just, it, will be, it will be a direct consequence of your emphasis, depending on your personal goals. Um, what I tell people is, don't you want to be capable, regardless of what your exercise is going to make you like? Don't you want to have the emphasis, the primary focus on what you do is to become capable to use your body in practical ways, all kind of practical ways in the real world? And for that, you're going to have to really embody get into your body so that you can interact with the real world. When you lift and carry something, it has nothing to do when you run and jump over an obstacle, when you hang and climb something, when you hold your breath and dive or swim, when you do all these things, practical things. Why do you want to do martial arts? Because you want the strength, the mental strength, the self-confidence that stem from it, but you also want the real world practical ability to defend yourself if needed. And it goes hand in hand. Becoming capable of defending yourself will make you feel more self-confident. And seeking self-confidence uh, will have to rely on something real, such as real skills, real ability to fight or defend yourself. Okay. When you do that, you're a sensei, a teacher, MMA teacher, whatever you call it, coach, is not going to tell you, look, you look too too of a way, you're too of a way, or too skinny, not strong enough, whatever they, way they look at your body, and tell you, why don't you go to a gym, train hard, and you come back fit, and then I will start to teach you techniques. That's not the way it works. They right away teach you techniques, knowing that as you develop the skills through those specific techniques, specific physiological adaptations will take place. Yes? Yes. That's the approach, which totally makes sense. So you will focus mostly on the drills, the skills, drilling the skills, the motor learning, the neuromuscular patterns, the muscle memory, whatever you call it, mm -hmm. so that you can do the techniques fast, accurately, with effectiveness. And knowing that as you do that, you get, become stronger, more flexible. Uh, more cardio, lose weight, gain strength, all of those positive physiological adaptations are, are the result. And on top of that, to support the skills, you can do specific drills for, hey, here I need more strength for that technique in that specific body part. Here I need more flexibility for that technique in those specific areas, your ribcage, your spine, your whatever, more strength in the neck, 
uh, more flexibly in, in the hips, that it is for ground movement, jiu-jitsu, that it is for, uh, you know, standing and uh, movement on your feet and, and, and kicking and all of that. Okay? It's specific to that practical real-world effectiveness that you are seeking. Okay. What I do and what I teach and what my team teaches worldwide is nothing but that expanded to the full range of human natural movement skills. We're talking about running, you know, anything gait, walking, running, balancing, jumping, moving on all fours, ground movements, get-ups, rolling, all of that, hanging and climbing, um, um, uh, manipulative, those are locomotive movements, it's about, you know, locomotion through space. Then you have manipulative skills that also should involve locomotion through space. For instance, why do you lift heavy? You lift heavy so they can carry something. It's not just about you lift on the spot and lift on the spot and drop and lift and drop. You also have to carry things. And where do you have to carry things? On diverse terrains, on uneven terrains, maybe on, you know, rocky terrains unpredictable terrain, slippery terrains. So if you don't have the ability to move your body well in, on those terrains, you may have strength to lift and lift something heavy on a flat surface in a gym, but it's not going to work when you have to actually carry the load, maybe on your shoulder, on this kind of terrain. This is what we emphasize, specific adaptation to impose demand. So it's not just those skills. It's not just running on the, okay, I'm going to run on a treadmill. I'll have the running. I'm going to do pull-ups. I'll have the climbing. I'm going to jump up and down on the box. I'll have a, the jumping. This is an extreme simplification. No, you'll have to go for a diversity of context mm -hmm. where you apply the techniques, and I'll, I'll, be, I'll be finished with that, no. uh, where you will become adaptable. It's just like when you parry with different kind of guys, different body types. You're gonna, you're gonna, you know, parry against the guy who, who is, you know, tall and lanky and 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 light, but fast, or um, and the other guy who's maybe shorter, bigger, um, maybe crazy explosive or slower. But when you get a hold of you, you know, like it's, ugh, you can't get out of it. You are going to. It's not just about knowing the technique. It's how to apply, say, a jiu-jitsu technique. You know, like a choke or anything, or a, a, a strike on a diversity of openness, all different. This is what is makes this is what makes the the real good fighter. He's the guy who has no holes and he can fight anybody and right away find out how to get them. That's the good fighter. So the more monodimensional you are as a fighter, the more holes you have. Okay, so as a mover, as a natural mover for the real world, if you can run but you can only run on distance, but not for speed. Or you can run for speed, but not on uneven terrains where you're going to hurt your fragile. Don't want to be mean, but you're going to hurt your fragile ankles right away. You're going to sprain them because you're not used to it. You're not used, your eyes are not used to the terrain, to anticipate the terrain, to adapt to the terrain. So that's what I'm talking about. Why do you have, why do you want to exercise number one? is so that you can acquire the skills and be equipped with the skills that make you capable and autonomous and potentially helpful to others in the real world in a day-to-day -day fashion, which is just about moving furniture and helping friends, or in more demanding and unexpected situations where you don't have time to call 911 or something needs to be done right away. And if you're not in shape, or if you're not in shape in that practical way of capability is the mixing of, of movement competency, the skills, and capacity, the physiological adaptations. And you need both. And if you don't have that, then you're not ready. If you're not ready, then you're helpless to yourself and to others. And I'm here to tell people, just become helpful. Just become capable. Mm -hmm. You drew a really interesting correlation to um, physical capability and confidence and maybe competence. Can you talk about that? So I think human beings in general are uh, lacking confidence. And obviously some don't. Some have, have false confidence. Some have a true confidence. I think the ability to develop confidence is something that all of us work on. And you drew a correlation there between physical competency and confidence. And I would love to have you talk about your belief or your approach uh, in how those things correlate. So obviously, if I, if I know that I'm physically capable in all circumstances, 
maybe then I have some, by, by the sounds of it, I have some increased level of confidence. You have for sure. Um, even though it's partial, uh, confidence has to do with context. So let me give you an example. Let's say you develop all these movement skills I'm talking about, and you feel very confident about that. But you have one Achilles tendon is that you fear water and you never train swimming and diving and anything like that. Well, if something happens that requires water skills, you're not self-confident at all. And you could as well panic. So the context is everything. It doesn't matter that you can run and lift heavy and jump over obstacles with precision. You're done. You're in the water. That's your kryptonite. Mm -hmm. uh, that could be a guy who actually has all these movement skills, can swim, can dive, hold his breath. Now you have him climb 10 feet high and they, they have vertigo and it's irrepressible. And there's nothing they can do in their mind. They just can't take it. They start to shake and they have tunnel vision, all the symptoms and all. They start to be dizzy and almost don't want to faint. Some people have that badly. Okay, so the context is everything. So back to specifically to your question, to become physically capable for the real world is a great asset and it will definitely boost your self-confidence enormously because you know that you can walk the streets and walk, walk through life and anything happen, you'll be able to run. You'll be able to uh, climb and jump and pass obstacle. Anything happens. Uh, you need a, you'll be able to help. You'll, you, you'll, need, uh, you'll be able to uh, pull somebody out of the water. I don't know what, what could happen. You'll feel confident that you can do that to get you out or get somebody else out of a tight spot. Now, you may have that, and then you go to a social event, and you feel no self-confidence. Because the kind of self-confidence, you don't have social skills. So it's not really helping you. Okay, a lot of young guys, they want to get bulky, right? They want to have big arms and stuff. It's, it's a very common thing in male. Um, I, mean, I was there too. I mean, I was a teenager. I wanted to, you know, I started to do push-ups and pull-ups and, uh, and heavy squats and stuff. Uh, because at that point, my body looks, looked mattered to me a lot. And I thought... If I'm, if I'm looking strong like this, I feel better with myself. So I'll feel better, say, you know, around girls and things like that. But the truth is, it did help a little, but just a little. Because in the end, context is everything. Mm -hmm. So self-confidence is always backed up by the skills you rely or you you, it's the, the, the skills you have. The real ability you have is the foundation for you. It's like the self-confidence is the crown on top of the body. That is the ability that you is your rock and you can rely on. Does that make sense? Yeah. Otherwise, you're just trying to talk yourself into a pseudo self-confidence. You try to be like, have a crown of, I'm confident, I'm confident, I'm confident, I'm confident. If I repeat it myself enough, I'll believe in it. And then it will work anytime, anywhere. And then <laughs> just goes like that. Just one person talks to you in a way, <gasps> you're like, you know, and you don't know who you are, you don't know what you think, you don't know what to say, and you're not confident. It's just your confidence crumbles. Mm -hmm. Why? Because maybe the person exposes things you are confused about, about yourself. And they, and they read you right away, and then right away, and boom, they get you. Right? Because people do that. So self-confidence is the symptom the skills, the ability. Now, that's the foundation. That's the cause of your self-confidence. Confidence is the shine. It's, it's, and then you feel it. It's the nectar. It's the nectar that comes from your practice, whatever your practice is, whatever the way you practice yourself. And that's why I like to say, for me, natural movement is a physical expression of my spirit. And it's a spiritual expression of my body. It goes hand in hand. That's in my book. It's a quick quote from my book because to me that is the same. What I'm looking for is not just physical. And when I'm, when I'm looking for the mental or whatever you call it, spiritual part of, of, of who I am and who I choose to be in my life, it's not just thinking. There's an interaction with my body with an interaction with 
the world outside of me. The ocean, the plants, the rivers, the animals, the whatever it is. Yeah, that's fantastic and amazing. And I want you to start teaching us um, what are the foundations of starting to access that thought? Because I think many people, and you know, to be honest, myself included for many years, are very disconnected from my body. And the idea of um, reconnecting with natural human movement, what are those foundational things that we want to start with um, so we can start connecting, as you say, your movement and mind with, or, or I guess maybe you just start off with your mind and your movement, right? What allows you to connect with your body? Okay, like, <clears throat> remember when I when I uh, talked about there's a solution for every problem? Mm -hmm. You have a headache, you don't take any pill. You take the one pill that's for headache. Mm -hmm. You're depressed, you don't take a, a pill for, uh, you know, going to the bathroom. You take a pill for, you know, an antidepressant. Sure. A mood enhancer. Okay. So when you think of it that way, then... We, real, we realize that our culture has compartmentalized everything. Mm -hmm. Everything is a compartment and a box with an expert or some kind of authority for each thing. And by the way, natural movement is not supposed to be that, but by fact is that. It's like you want to learn to be capable and to move naturally with effectiveness, with efficiency. That's what we teach. So uh, we are not there to, hey, we don't have a lose weight fast program that's not what we do um so we specialize on that this is what we excel at this is what we're really good at we don't pretend to be good at everything but this thing we are the leaders in the world about um so so this being said we are taught to look for specificity because we are taught to specialize in our life hey what do you want to do in your life what's going to be a job so you're going to start to specialize. What sports do you choose? Well, do you want to run? Do you want to do tennis? Do you want to do baseball? Do you want to do basketball? You are constantly harassed for choosing a specialization of some sort in your studies, in your sports, in your activities. And I'm telling you this. It's not that specialization is bad in itself. Specialization has many advantages, such as becoming really good at something, which makes you, by the way, confident at least at something. And you can talk about it. Hey, I'm an expert at this. This is my thing. And people are, oh, wow, really? Wow, you can do this? You know that? That's, you, whoa. And you can shine with your specialization. Mm -hmm. With your achievements in a, spe specialized, in a specialized uh, uh, activity, so, so it, there are good things so many great discoveries have been made because people, scientists researchers uh, workers, whatever uh, artists, uh, sports people uh, have specialized in one thing so there's some. There's really some advantages to that some beauty to it and it, it participates to improving everybody's knowledge, what we know about the world everything now how about you, 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 me, everybody in their life? Do we need to be that specialized? And how do we compartmentalize our life? Okay, right now this is the me working. And then this is the me doing, uh, being social. And then this is the me on vacation. And then this is the me being in love. And then this is the me um, having my little, uh, you know, secret garden or, you know, uh, main ca um, caveman or whatever it is, uh, like little thing that's my hobby, my, my little thing. Mm -hmm. And it's like we are a different person for each of those activities. Okay, this is what this is, this is leading me to. What if you were to see your life as the practice of energy at every level? Breathing 24-7, energy, eating, what do you eat, when do you eat, movement, when do you move, how often do you move, what kind of movement do you do, why do you do them, what do you pursue, how does it make you feel, what do you pursue with your food, why are you eating a certain way, why are you living a certain way, 
what experience do you pursue? What is that specific choice that you make that you maybe forget that you made the choice? Nobody put that junk food in your body, in your belly, but yourself. It's not shoved down by force by somebody else. And nobody put that healthy food in your body. Nobody's telling you, you should eat healthy and everything, and then you listen. No, it's like you make the decision. Nobody puts you in that couch and forces you to stay there for an hour. Nobody puts you in that gym or in, that, in nature and telling you to move and train and get stronger. So that you're aware of your choices or you're not aware of your choices, but you should be aware of your choices. You should, you should look at everything you do in your day from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to bed and including what you dream about in, 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 at night. You should pay attention to what is it exactly that you choose and you should start to consider if you truly want to empower yourself, then start considering that everything is of your choice. Everything is of your choice. And if you don't, don't acknowledge that, then you're disempowered because you will keep telling, no, well, but I'm not really choosing this, I'm not really doing that. It's not me, it's not my fault, it's the circumstances, my parent, my wife, my girlfriend, my boyfriend, and, and, and my, 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 my neighbors, uh, Santa Claus, whatever, the Pope. It's always somebody else. So unless you totally look at every detail of what you do, why do you put those clothes on? Why do you have that conversation with people? Why do you emphasize on those topics, on those, on, on those thoughts, on those kind of feelings? What's the deal? What's your deal? What is it that you entertain and that you don't even see yourself entertaining from morning to evening? And what is it that you dream of? And what is it that you truly want? And how does everything that you do and think about and feel, how does it make you feel? Because this is making your experience that you call life. And that experience that which you call life is the result of all of those things. Everything is interconnected. So if you want to empower yourself to have the experience that you truly say you want, then pay attention closely and start making better choice that actually truly support that experience that you claim to want. There's so much ambiguity in the world. You speak of breathing for energy, eating for energy, moving for energy. How do we begin to know what's right for us? Because I think a lot of people oftentimes choose, make their decisions based on other people's expectations and other people's goals and objectives. Do you have any advice on how do I know what I should eat? How do I know how I should breathe? How do I know how I should move? It's very simple. That answer will be like the fastest I've, I've provided so far. Pay attention to how it makes you feel. And check out if it makes you feel the way you want to feel. That that's it is that is in theory an easy answer, but so we have a paradigm in life that says this is correct, right? People live in a in a black and white reality, right? If I'm a vegan, veganism is the best way to eat. If I am a on a keto diet, if I am a on a on a carnivore diet, if I'm a bodybuilder, if I'm a, a MMA person, because of the avatars that have come before us, they're telling me this is the best way to approach it. So even though maybe maybe I'm pursuing something and I have an objective and a target and I say, well, that's what everyone who's come before me has done. Therefore, I should model them. But it doesn't feel right to me. So precisely pay attention to the way it makes you feel. And that that answer might not be instant. It may not be uh, been overnight. And it really depends on what it is. Uh, it, if it comes to, say, diet, you may have an instant answer but you also may have an answer that's on the course of several days several weeks several months even and also you have to pay attention to how things connect because remember uh, that idea of compartmentalization and how it just doesn't work because the same person the person who works and the person who plays and the person who's in love and the person who uh does physical say fitness and the person who does whatever activity is the same person there's no difference so everything alters your, your experience and your levels of energy um, and your levels of satisfaction. Because in the end, it's about satisfaction. It's about actually making that. 
we should be thinking, hey, I've really enjoyed this. I really enjoyed that meal. I've really enjoyed uh, that moment, that conversation, that person, that 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 night of sleeping, uh, that love making, that uh, uh, gardening, whatever it is. I've really enjoyed it. It made me feel good. We should find satisfaction. We should not stick uh, and stagnate entertaining things that are proven to be just not satisfying to us. A person who does not like gardening or taking care of plants should not do that. Um, but if that's what makes you happy, then maybe you should do it more. Um, a person that is not making you feel good, um, you know, or the kind of person that does not make you feel good, um, well, but you should you should pay attention to what's the what's the deal there. Is it that they have a teaching for you? You need to realize that there's something that is actually you have to change, or are, are they just you're not the problem? You, the problem is that you are aware that these are not the kind of people you should hang out with, and yet you find yourself picking the same kind of person every time and having the same kind of arguments and stuff like that. So what's up with you? Are you paying attention? Are you doing your homework? What is this telling you? And is it the experience that you want? And if you say, no, that's not the experience that I want, then you have to ask yourself, why is it that it repeats itself then? If you don't want it, why is it still there? Why is it always coming back? So what it comes back to is you have to challenge your belief system or challenge what you think you know and maybe challenge what society tells you is the uh, ideals to pursue and feel. Ken, uh, um, um, Ben, I look, Ben, I think that society is an easy, um, easy like scapegoat. And yet I agree with you because I've always said the same. So I have to agree with you too. I just, let's say, would like to um, mitigate that a little. There is, you are absolutely right. There is undeniable that society, um, and you've mentioned it twice, like what the world imposes to you and what society you know, wants you to be. And there's no doubt that we're all impressionable and that we cannot deny the culture what surrounds us. Like, for instance, right now, there is all that coronavirus thing. Okay? Everybody's talking about it. It's been months, and it's heavy, heavy on people's lives, on people's minds. There's so much negativity around it. Even if you don't want to think about it and talk about it, you will feel the energy, right? Because we're, we're, we're connected. It's like, um, you know, you see a flock of bird, or, or a school of fish, and they move like one. But there are hundreds or thousands. The coral in the ocean starts to move, and you know, uh, it's like awake at the same time, regardless of wherever they are on the planet. There are like these things of connection depending on the species. There is, we talk about collective psyche. There's no doubt that your surrounding, your context, family, but also society, country, all of that will impact the way you individually feel and the way you think about yourself, the way you see the world, all of that. No doubt. So agree with you. Let's say where I wanted to mitigate is if we keep um, saying that the world around us makes us who we are, then we are disempowered the only way to empower yourself is to endorse full responsibility as of what your experience is and i know that you can say well this happened to me when i was a kid i didn't choose that yeah but today as a grown-up what is it that you truly choose and let's say if you don't have the life you want or certain aspects of your life are not what you want, that you definitely would like, would love to have better. But maybe you don't, and maybe you could. What makes you think that you can't have that? Well, it's because you think that you can't have that. You cannot have it. You think that you cannot have it. You think that you cannot be that. 
you think that you cannot have that experience. So, well, if you start that way, then it's a self-fulfilling prophecy because every time you think of what you really desire, you're telling yourself, can't, no, mm -mm. not for me. I, it would be great, but mm, no. Mm. No, so I'll be happy with just that. I'll be happy with that, that level. I like that, but I'll be happy with that, but I like that. Or I'll be happy with here, but I like somewhere else. Or I'll be happy, or like, I'll be content. Like, can half that satisfied with this? But what I truly would like is that. Okay. What prevents your energies, your mind, and your, your time, and everything to go in that direction, to have a confidence that you can, that things can't change? You have to have that confidence. You have to believe for yourself. You have to invite it. You have to go straight into the feeling that makes you think the opposite, that makes you entertain the opposite of which you consciously claim to want. Tell me about your daily practices to connect with that. So consistency, consistency. You have to pay attention to how you use your thoughts and your feelings on a daily basis all the time. And again, reminder to myself. Reminder to myself, there is never a moment where you won't be challenged to do that better. And the better you do it, the better your life. But when you forget and when you entertain, or you don't forget, but you keep entertaining certain behaviors, mental behaviors, certain feelings, so emotional behaviors that you know are detrimental to you, and you don't tackle those. You don't stare at them to dissolve them and to replace them with the feeling you want to have, the experience you want to have now in the moment. So you entertain them and so you magnify them. And so they stay and they get stronger. You are fueling them. That's really what you fuel kind of thing. You know, you, you starve what you don't want and you keep fueling what you invite at every level. But it starts in the mind and in the in the heart, in the emotions, and in the mind, in the thoughts. If you don't have both and you don't work on both, for instance, if you try to convince yourself mentally of, oh, yeah, and I'm this and that, and um, but that's not the feeling. That's, I love you, my baby, only you. You're the most beautiful. You. Have a great afternoon. If you... the thoughts and the emotions are not aligned there's some bullshit there you're bullshitting yourself they're trying to tell you oh yeah i'm self-confident those are words those are thoughts if you close your eyes and you delve into your heart and you try to see um If you, your heart puts its money where your mouth is, and if you're the, the emotion, you're like, oh, I'm self-confident, and you get in there, and you really pay attention to what's your emotion as you say that, and then you're like, Phew. the truth about yourself, I'm not self-confident. It's not true. I'm trying to make myself self-confidence. I'm trying to believe that I'm self-confident. But it's a, it's a mental belief. It's a mental affirmation. Mental affirmation, don't get mistaken. So important. So important. In manifestation, but we're, when we, I talk about manifestation, I'm not talking about like, oh, yeah, I'm going to have this great house and this great car and whatever, this great career. I'm not talking about that. This is secondary. This is what you're going to have. What you're going to have is the result of what you're going to do. Or what you're going to do is the result of who you choose to be. So manifestation starts with who you choose to be. What is it to be? It's to have an experience. How do you have an experience? You have an experience with your thoughts and with your emotions. What is it that you entertain? Go right there. Focus on that. This is where 
the self mastery starts. Otherwise, you're just confused with details. Oh, yeah, I'll be in that country. Oh, yeah, I'll, you know, have that kind of chick. Oh, yeah, I'll have this kind of body. Oh, yeah. Plus, if I had like this tattoo on it and this, and I'll look exactly like that. I want to look exactly like that, man. That would be dope. Like, I'll be so charismatic and everything. It's just, you are losing yourself. I'm not, I'm, I mean, some, don't get me wrong. To have a great body and to be satisfied, to have a beautiful tattoo that you, is meaningful to you. I am not, this, I'm not saying, if it's meaningful, if it's really aligned beautifully and meaningfully with who you choose to be and everything is aligned, then it's beautiful. But if it's just a surface thing, you know, you're trying to paint yourself with gold, but underneath, that's a different metal. So go put the gold in the heart. Go put the gold in the thought. This is where... Um, you've got to remove a dust that prevents you from having the, the, the best experience, the true experience that you, uh, that you could invite. What is it? It's to me in my value system, it's necessarily, um, positive. It's necessarily like good things to happen to me and to the people I love, to my family, and to my friends and then by, by extension to everybody to wish goodness to everybody and to experience goodness within as much as possible as often as possible and to keep mediocrity at bay as van morrison would say in one of his songs uh and and what is mediocrity well anything that is not the best version of ourselves the best version of the experience the kind of experience we have a potential to have, which is just goodness, happiness, gratefulness. You know, in the end, that you're a Buddhist or a Christian, they all talk about the same principles. You can call that karma, and then in karma, you know, there are the bad deeds, um, and you need liberation from that, and the Christian is going to say you need redemption from that. And the bad deeds are sins, you know, and uh, and karma is your soul, you know, your soul journey, uh, you know, uh, into this world um, and things like that. They, they all talk about the same principles, just in a different light with different words. But in the end, it's all the same principles. There is a battle between good and bad, between light and darkness, between goodness and evil. And this is why there are really bad people in this world, really doing really bad things. You have really good thing, good people re doing really good things. And then you ha have people who, who, are, who are in between and trying to figure out things. So you have those books about manifestations and those stuff and all. And yeah, and it's great. Yeah, how are you going to have, uh, what's the secret to have this perfect house, perfect everything? But they're talking about manifestation, what you're going to have. And then people are like, oh, yeah, can I learn to manifest what I'm going to have? Because I want to have that, and I want to have that, and I want to have that, and I want to have that. Dude, you're not going to have anything if you are not that. Yeah. That's it. What you're going to get is a direct result of who you are. Who are you? Well, who, who you are is what you experience right now in the eternal now right now right now are you good to, are you good are you good it's a challenge because there are forces there are beneficial forces there are beneficial influences you can call that you know oh don't say forces it's like cuckoo kind of term okay talk about influences then influences that imprint impressions on you let's say you look at media all the time 50 times a day what are the impressions you get from that negativity depression all the time all the time divide people insulting each other people talking about the end of the world oh and then some solutions maybe we're going to be saved and this and that all the time okay um 
look, looking up to people who are great singers, great dancers, great all of that, but you know, they also have in other aspects completely shitty lives. And they're not necessarily smart and they're not necessarily wise and they're not necessarily happy. They just have that thing that everybody is like dreaming to have. It's like they have popularity and success in that way, but they may not have success in every way, in other way that matter. So before you focus your energy on like, yeah, I got to achieve this in my life. You know, I got to be, a, you know, a seven digit, you know, this and that, like you are pursuing um you're placing the cart uh what's the expression you know play cart before the horse right part of my french um <laughs> sometimes not so good at those uh popular say but that's what you're doing really that's what you're doing because you have not done the fundamental the funda foundational work of understanding truly who you are and what you want to experience so you go for what's easy you go for what what glitters and that looks like gold to you but it may not be gold. So for those people who are living with a disconnect and they identify a disconnect between, the, you know, it's like this idea of the cognitive dis dissonance between their heart and their mind. And they identify, I'm not living in my, in my heart and where I want to be. Is it as simple as identifying who you want to be and, and start living into those um, realities i guess living into those emotions and being that person and and being the person you want to become will then express as this this uh harmony between the heart and the mind um i'm not sure i understand i, I would like to make sure that i understand sure. so if, if i intellectualize that i want to be confident i want to be happy i want to be fulfilled i want to feel love i can intellectualize that but maybe i can't embody that maybe i don't or at least i don't embody that yet i feel like i'm not happy i'm not always nice i'm sometimes experiencing the stresses of the world and sometimes they're overwhelming what is your suggestion to start moving toward being the person you want to be um you want to check out your emotion about it that is truly how you truly feel about you um, before you only think of it. Thinking of it is not necessarily feeling it. There's something that bothers you. Clearly, if you want to have something, it's because it feels that you don't have it and that bothers you. Uh, so same thing with physicality. So number one, uh, check out quickly where, where you're at in your in your emotion do you feel that that's really something that you don't have do you think that it's really something that you deserve that you're capable of that you really want it's you you're ready to commit to get and number two is to um to just have patience patience you may not have the breakthrough a breakthrough of a night you may not have a significant significant change of a night an epiphany Right. Things take time. Look at the way you train the body. Let's say if you just do, say, bodybuilding. Man, it's patience. It's hard work. It's commitment. And it's progressions. And it's recovery. And do the work again. And feel it. Have a feel in your muscles of the way you do certain movement. Visualize how you want to look at the same time. Very powerful when you do bodybuilding. You visualize. I like to say bodybuilding is a philosophy. <clears throat> I'm, just, I'm just using an example here. And people are like, this is not philosophy. You just want to be big and all. I'm like, precisely. Because your body doesn't want to be big. Your mind wants to be big. Your mind has a representation of yourself as being big. with As in muscles, kizzled, bulky, looking strong, looking beautiful. Because there's an aesthetic to it. Um, and... Then having the the benefit of what it makes me feel when I kind of have the mirror of people looking at me and they're like, well, whoa, they turn their head and they look at me, but yeah, I know I'm big, you like it, huh? Okay. And that's what it's there. That's one of the things that satisfies us. It's a philosophy. We expect a certain experience in our mind and and heart through 
the way our body is going to look like. As we train, we already have part of that instant gratification. When we train, we start think, feeling stronger. We do feel strong. We do feel strong in our body, strong in our mind and all. It's, it, we, it pumps us up. I've never done bodybuilding, but I've done... Yeah, actually, I've done a form of bodybuilding, which is, you know, to some extent, you know, doing biceps curls and stuff. I've done that in the past. I know exactly how it, ma- it made me feel. I know exactly what it brought to me. So that's a metaphor for if somebody wants to be strong right away or looking strong right away and they realize that it's not going to happen with, you know, going to the gym three times is going to be a whole process over at least a year to start to look really good and then several more years to refine every little thing to start to really kizzle and to just make it like elite level so much time and energy you have to put in there and that time and energy is not placed in other aspects of your development as a person you don't just build a person by building their body so you don't just build self-confidence by building self-confidence in one compartment, one aspect of who you are. So a lot of people, they get discouraged, disheartened right away because they're like, you know what? So oh, wow, I have to go through all of that? Like, forget about it. And, and when it comes to uh, what, what we teach, move nat- natural movement, it's the same. It's the same as if a person goes to a gym three times, six times, and then they have a hole they just bought in January, New Year's resolution, they bought a whole membership for a whole year. And they're going to go for three weeks at most, and then they quit. Yeah, because they realize, oh, wait, 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 wait. That's commitment, that thing. Commitment. So when people say, oh, well, nothing works, (laughs) nothing works, you want to ask them first, like, Okay, um, what do you mean nothing works? What have you tried for the problem you say you have? What have you done? And for how long have you done it? How did you do it? What what was your your true mindset about it and your true feeling about it? Did you believe in it in the first place? All kind of things. Everything plays a role. So it's, it's more complex than it looks. So accept the idea that whatever it is that you want to improve, in you, in your experience, in your life, that it is physio- uh, that it is physical, physiological, psychological, emotional, spiritual, and then social, professional, financial, all different aspects of what you call you, what you call your life. It's always a step-by-step process. You have to put the work in. Nobody is going to do it for you. If you cannot empower yourself, who will? Nobody is going to do it for you. So you have to look at it as a lifelong pursuit. And it starts now, but what's going to make you self-confident actually is to know that if you are genuinely committed with confidence with clarity and with consistency into that process, even when it's difficult, even when you feel that I haven't learned anything, I have not yet cracked that nut, I still haven't made a real progress on this or on that and that. But have you stopped trying? Have you stopped being on it? No, you're there. You're in the process. You're committed. You have clarity about it and you have confidence and you have consistency. Keep doing it. Keep being it, keep choosing it, keep inviting it, and it will happen because it is happening in the process. Things are unfolding until they are revealed to you as an experience where you're like, hallelujah, boom, we did it. Good job, bro. Absolutely amazing information, Erwan. What else can I say? You you took that and ran with it, and I think you've inspired th- 
thousands of people and hopefully millions of people around the world. Seriously, like that, that was so much value. And uh, thank I'm you. Super, I'm super grateful for that. I would love, I'm sure people are going to want to check out what you do and learn more about you. Where's the best place for them to, to find you and do that? Well, first off, I appreciate your good words and your compliments. And I, I, uh, I, I came here to talk about move now, natural movement, right? And uh, we, poof, we, listen, but, you, you opened up a lot of minds, which will have people pursuing what you teach. You know, well, yeah, I, that's what, you know, it's part of, uh, by the way, well, I was part of uh, my, um, my vision. Uh, many years ago, uh, about 15 years ago now, when I decided to do what I'm doing now, um, nobody knew me. I didn't have experience. I didn't have finances. I didn't have a network. I didn't have credential, nothing. But I had a vision that I would bring that idea of natural movement to the whole world to help people in their lives, to give them tools so that they could um, learn to operate their body and train physically in a way that was really meaningful and really profound and, and really effective, very efficient. So I designed a whole method for it, but things happened. I got into men's health fitness with a feature length article. There's like some magic that happened that put me on the, on the way and propelled me onto the scene to do what I, I'm doing now. Uh, so what I'm doing now is started with an idea that was only in my mind, only in my mind. So my point is that's manifestation. And you can do the same in your life for whatever it is that you want to experience. You, well, you may not be, say, um, president of the United States, even though, uh, you know, um, uh, you never know. But there are, here's what you have to understand. If you acknowledge that the external world can impact you, then you have to acknowledge that you can impact the external world. You can impact it, obviously, let's say if you decide you travel there you're gonna find yourself in tibet if that's where you want to be you can do that uh but you can also by thought and by vision and by visualization and by by heart uh invite the circumstances you want so this is not something that i teach uh this is something i was really uh just happy to talk about and share today with you ben uh i'm actually writing a a, a book about it um but what's important is to walk the walk the walk so it's, you know, I'm backing it up with the way I live my life and what I've done in my life. Um, but uh, otherwise, when it comes to uh, MoveNat, it's MoveNat.com, M-O-V-N-A-T.com. And um, we've been doing uh, real events, workshops all around the world in multiple countries that have an international team for about a decade now. Uh, we've trained special forces. We've trained elite MMA fighter, fighters. Um but uh, we also have been teaching people online. We have online coaching. We have two e-courses. Uh, we have what we call maps, which are free um, weekly uh, programs with videos and all. We've been doing a lot of work, my team and I, for years now to help people get started. Uh, not just moving nature, just not telling them, hey, go climb a tree and that's it. That's going to be a revolution for you and you. we don't need you to know anything else we've been teaching people techniques on how to be efficient and safe doing these things and how to progress um and do sound progressions and safe progressions but we've used the whole scope of tools uh one-on-one -on -one coaching uh online coaching indoor training outdoor training uh one day workshops multiple day workshops licensed gyms that where you can go and then it's just right around the corner and th that network is growing and growing um i have a book called the practice of natural movement it's a 480 pages book with you know it's called the people call it the the bible of natural movement so many techniques the whole philosophy but that's just 20 percent of the book all the rest is just practical knowledge on how to get started with your own practice the maps you sign to our newsletter on uh, movenat.com and uh, you will get those in your email every week and that's especially good now because of confinement and all uh we have communities on facebook and all you know it's and then we have those online courses that have uh, um, programs in them so you can follow and videos everything is done highly professionally um so we've been doing our educational work to to bring this experience to bring this capability to the world to everyone um we have 
families training together, we have neighbors and friends training together, we have people training solo, we have specialized athletes to do that. Right now I'm working with uh, an elite um, a free diving champion. Um, we are, we've trained again, uh, we've trained the military special forces. Um, we've trained people who came back from, from, from injuries, from uh, all kinds of demographics. We have tons of healthcare practitioners, people who do care practice and, and physiotherapy who train with us because when they combine their treatments with you know, telling people do those natural movements, hold those natural movement positions and stuff, they've realized that the 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 healing, you know, uh, the 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 therapy was just increasingly more potent, and so there's a word of math around that a lot, um, and it's catching up also with uh, the strength and classic strength and conditioning world because they realize that we may have additional tools that they've that they're not aware of yet. Yeah, I'll tell you, it's, when you were speaking in the beginning, I thought for sure you'd work with the military because you were definitely talking about some things that sounded very, um, very suitable for the special forces. And I know they would definitely love what you're talking about. And uh, yeah. I'm going to direct as many people as I can to you. I'm going to become a student of yours because this sounds very interesting. And not just because of the natural movement, right? Because of the ethos, because of the ethos of this idea of connecting mind and body and heart. And that's so much in alignment with what I'm teaching just from a different realm, right? I'm, I'm doing my best to connect the demographic, my demographic to that. Absolutely. You know, I, I, I can sense that you have uh, that, uh, that heart condition, Ben, you know, it's like your drive is, um, um, okay. Anyone can be on out there on social media, do tons of, you know, stuff, but, I sense in you that you are absolutely very composed, um, very clear, and really trying to get the gems, really trying to extract extract the gold for your for the people who trust in you, who are trust that they can place that time and that tension into your your message, your material, your, what your um, guests have to say, because you're trying to bring something of value into people's lives, and so that is you know all credit to you. Um, um what you said about you know you could be a say a a bodybuilding coach and have that heart of looking at you know the all-encompassing person through bodybuilding through dance through martial arts through music through a sport you know the best coaches in sports they never just talked about the strategy Right. They talk to bat. They talk to the heart. They talk to the whole person mm -hmm. because they wanted to have every individual in the team to connect to the, the the spirit of the whole team, to put all the heart in it, to have that synergy. That's so strong, so potent. So when you're a good teacher, when you're a good coach. Um, there can be an excellent coach at your specific skill. Okay, place your fingers like this. This is how you play uh, the the you know the clarinet or a guitar or. But some coaches they know how to reach your mind and your heart, not for themselves, but because they understand that you're a whole person, and that the skill that you learn is a tool for that. Chop the wood, carry the water. Chop the wood, carry the water. Chop the wood, carry the water. I mean, come on, man. The guy is like a freaking badass, best sword man ever seen. And he goes to see that other older master to learn that one skill that he's like, this is going to make me perfect. Chop the wood, carry the water for years. Like, come on, man. Like, teach me, you know, yeah, teach me. Like, I've slaved for you for all that time. So what's up now? Well, I just need to learn, you know, patience and humility and just humility, most importantly. Okay. So, um, uh, brilliant. I was talking about that exact thing yesterday. So thank you for that reference. So we're both on the same page. Yeah. Remember yeah. Bruce Lee. Yep. Our people love Bruce Lee, but why is it? Because he was not just 
a great he has that he had that charisma that was beyond kung fu beyond uh the the movements and the techniques and the martial art he spoke with philosophy he had so he could reach he could tap into a higher level of awareness for for his students so that they would open to more than just looking at the fist and looking at the body parts and looking at the movement patterns of a technique they were looking deeper into the practice how they were doing the practice so they were looking at intention intention Erwan, very grateful for your time today. I'm grateful for your wisdom. Thank you. It's been amazing to connect with you, and I will absolutely hope to be in touch in the near future. Uh, with great pleasure, Ben. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys, that's a wrap for today. Thank you for joining the live broadcast, and we will see you again soon. And that's a wrap, ladies and gents. Thank you very much for tuning into this podcast with Erwan LaCour. I want to give Erwan a special shout-out and his Move Nat workshops around the world. He's training some really high-level individuals from MMA fighters and special force, forces operators uh, and just average people. And his himself and his instructors are doing an incredible job teaching people how to connect with their body, how to move in a way that will sustain life and vitality, not just now, but for many, many years to come. Uh, thank you very much for being here. I know you have many, many choices and many places you can go with your time. Thank you for supporting myself. Thank you for supporting the podcast. And thank you for supporting our sponsors because sponsors make this podcast possible. If you enjoy the podcast, we always appreciate you guys supporting the sponsors. If you like it, uh, you can head over to wildalaskanseafoodbox.com. Use the code BEN for $20 off your order and free scallops for life, or at least as long as you continue subscribing. Enjoy your day, guys. Live your greatest life in a body that you absolutely love. Thank you so much for tuning in to Muscle Intelligence. If you enjoyed today's episode, please be sure to share it with at least one person you know. Make sure you're subscribed so you never miss an episode. This podcast is for information purposes only. The statements and views on this podcast are not medical advice. This podcast, including Ben Pikulski and the producers, disclaim responsibility for any possible adverse effects from the use of information contained herein. Opinions of guests are their own, and this podcast does not endorse or accept responsibility for statements made by guests. This podcast does not make any representations or warranties about guest qualifications or credibility. This podcast may contain paid endorsements or advertisements for products or services. Individuals on this podcast may have a direct or indirect financial interest and products or services referred to herein. If you think you have a medical problem, consult a licensed physician.